good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast of Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. And our top story today, building more resilient DC equity exposures. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Greg Jenkins is the head of Institutional Defined Contribution. And Danielle Singer is the head of North America and EMEA client solutions, both of whom are with Invesco. Danielle, Greg, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks, Jeff. Great to be here. Yeah, great it's great to, to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you back, Greg. And Danielle, it's obviously a pleasure to meet you. Uh, Greg, I want to start with you because inflation, it's its a hot topic. And, you know, plan sponsors, participants, they're concerned. Um, let's start off with what are some of the traditional methods by which long-term investors, especially retirees, have used to try to mitigate the effects of inflation in their retirement plans? Yeah, so pre-pandemic, let's keep in mind, inflation was very low for a long time. And so, you know, this idea of worrying about inflation and economic cycles, it's its relatively a relatively new thing for, for many investors. Traditionally, investors have tried to include a number of different things to ward off the effects of inflation. I'm not a big fan of the of the, the term inflation hedge because the more you study that, the more you realize it really doesn't exist. But some of the things that have been tried are, you know, uh, treasury and inf inflation protected securities or TIPS, uh, REITs, and even commodities and metals and mining stocks. So this can be confusing for DC plan fiduciaries. Do you try to include one of these options in your plan lineup, knowing that you're going to have many participants that just simply don't know how to uh, to use them. Unfortunately, the track record for the standalone single asset class inflation oriented options isn't good. Um, plan sponsor Council of America keeps data on some of these smaller asset classes. Uh, it's very helpful to look at. And last year, they they showed that 24 percent of plans offered a tips option, but it only captured 0.4% of assets on the aggregate. And if you look at REITs, uh, it's uh, it's very similar. Yeah, it's, it's certainly a big uh, communication aspect to adding any type of fund to the plan, especially when you're dealing with inflation. Danielle, welcome to the program. Great to see you. We often hear, and Greg mentioned this before, tips, treasury, um, inflation protection securities, and real estate are, are, are good hedges, to use uh, the word that Greg was using, to hedge inflation. But, but these aren't a panacea when it comes to mitigating inflation, are they? No, and, and Greg hit the nail on the head, right? So there's nothing that explicitly controls for inflation when you need it most, right? That hedge of inflation shocks or unexpected inflation. So really the best tool that you have is investing in assets, some of which Greg mentioned, that have some linkage to, for the most part, realized inflation or its knock-on effects. So really what we have to think about, or the bigger issue, is that most asset prices are driven by a much more complex web of effects. Meaning even if your inflation linkage works, right? You have to make sure that there aren't any other forces that overwhelm or impact the way the price of that asset still moves. Um, so to keep picking on tips a little bit, in 2022, you had a great example of this. So while tips are explicitly linked to CPI, there's really only a very low correlation between tips and unexpected inflation over the long term. So last year, you saw a double, di double digit loss from tips because it was the duration risk that overwhelmed the inflation protection property, given the move in real rates. So that's just one example. You just always have to take into consideration that there are other factors that are going to impact asset prices, and those are going to run really a complete gamut of fundamental news. So you're thinking about things like inflation, but you have to consider what's going on in monetary policy. Have there been any fiscal policy changes? Corporate news for things that are, are um, connected to corporations. And of course, global financial shocks. And that's just naming a few. Yeah, and, and Danielle, I mean, given that unpredictable 
uh, inflation is by <laughs> by definition not predictable. And there's like these moving goal goal uh, goalposts in terms of timing. What's a more diversified approach to managing a portfolio to handle the, the rigors of inflation? If tips are not the best, a real estate allocation is not the best. What's a more diversified approach? Yeah, so you know we would consider even being more broad than just thinking about inflation. Right. There's no crystal ball. Nobody can perfectly anticipate market shocks. But what we can do is think about how to overweight or underweight certain asset classes, certain regions, certain sectors based on how we think they may perform at various stages of the economic cycle more broadly. So whether we're in expansion, slowdown, contraction, recovery, a macro regime framework that anticipates which one of those four stages we may be in, then can be very helpful with trying to outperform the broader market. So if we bring this back to inflation then, inflation tends to rise during the early stages of the cycle and fall in the later stages. So you could see that a cycle-driven framework may help position men for those environments. But again, it's not just about inflation. We really want to think about a broader macro regime framework to be helpful for allowing investors to position, again, across multiple asset classes, across multiple sectors, as they look to navigate the business cycle. Um, we also think that this type of approach, a macro regime framework approach, can be very interesting when thinking about a single asset class. So something like equities, which are very cyclically sensitive, right? We're, we're always kind of thinking about how our consumer staple is going to do versus consumer discretionary. Do we want to be in growth or value? Do we prefer large cap or small cap? So a process like this then allows investors to just explicitly introduce that business cycle awareness into something that already exists in their portfolio, which is equities. And so what it allows then is for a more dynamic allocation to what may and may not perform well based on the expectation of where we will be in the business cycle. So this allows us then to think beyond just inflation and have a more comprehensive way to factor in all those economic risks, or as many as, as we can capture, um, like the impact of inflation, and have a better sense of what could drive asset prices. So Greg, I mean, Danielle brings up a very interesting approach. And, and for plan sponsors watching, consultants watching, and maybe some participants, how, how does this approach, the diversified approach, differ from the traditional? traditional equity strategy when it comes to inflation? Sure. So many equity strategies are style specific, like value, growth, et cetera. And the challenge is that one style typically doesn't perform well throughout a, an economic cycle. This can be true of a standard equity index as well. So, and they're all great tools in a diversified portfolio. But the problem is that some investors, including many DC participants, are uh, not diversified and tend to be overexposed uh, to one style. The type of strategy we're talking about dynamically changes its exposures based on macro indicators, as, as Danielle uh, so eloquently described. Um, it provides participants a chance of good returns in a variety of market environments. And because our strategy is rules-based, we're able to look back in time and compare how our model predicted these macro regimes uh, to what actually happened going back to, to uh, 1989. And what it shows is that this type of approach can work in a variety of economic environments. No model is perfect, of course, but the data shows uh, that during periods of more subtle economic change, like after the Eurozone debt crisis, uh, right, on, right on the heels of the, uh, the GFC, uh, as well as volatile periods like what we experienced more recently, that the framework held up. And uh, what this all means is that there are viable new approaches to equities that can be included uh, in DC plans at a reasonable price uh, to improve uh, participant outcomes. Yeah, uh, dynamic yeah. multi-factor funds that change their exposures based on those economic indicators. Well, Greg, Danielle, very interesting, but I need to take a very quick break. I'm so sorry to say, well, not sorry, but we need, do need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about implementation of these strategies. How do you do it? You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN. Imagine a new television network that will make you 
richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Greg Jenkins and Danielle Singer, both of whom are with Invesco. Danielle, Greg, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two. Happy to be back. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it is great to have you guys. Really fascinating topic. And, and, you know, you think about inflation, it really is impacting so many people on a day to day basis, but it's also impacting people when it's with their long term investing and retirement savings. Greg, I, I want to switch gears a little bit with you. I mean, I, what you and Danielle talked about, uh, very important. Um, but I want to talk about implementation of this approach. And you have a lot of good uh, information about just general how plan sponsors can implement some of these investment strategies. Do you envision this as part of a white label or a target date fund type of approach? Yeah, the good news about this type of strategy, Jeff, is that it can be implemented in a few different ways. It can be used um, in a target date glide path or as part of a white label equity option uh, as a complement to passive or active uh, equities. And so that makes it viable for consideration as a standalone option that could be beneficial as well. And Danielle, many watching this program, both plant sponsors, consultants, advisors, and participants, they may be passive investors does does this approach that we're talking about favor one or the other can it be implemented as active and or passive yeah so while this is kind of an index-based approach it isn't inherently passive 
Um, you really are dynamically tilting the portfolio to stocks based on what the signals or indicators are telling you about the type of regime we expect to be in. So the positioning might be more pro-cyclical or more defensive, depending on that. I would also say that the expectation of how this will perform is more aligned with an active approach as well, in that it's really aiming to not only outperform its market benchmark and lead to greater upside capture, but also it's about the risk mitigating properties that it may be able to express and result in lower downside capture numbers as well. And, and Danielle, just to follow up uh, on that uh, and follow up on Greg's comment about implementation, Look, cost is always a factor. And by cost, I mean the cost of management. Um, and, and, and it's critical in a retirement plan that, to make sure that you have the lowest cost possible. And I want to ask you, what is the cost in terms of fees to implement this? And how does it compare um, you know, to the traditional investment offering? I mean, is it more or less the same? Yeah, so it varies a little bit based on the market that you're looking at or the opportunity set. But we would expect that the cost would always fall somewhere between your traditional active and passive managements. So I think it is that cost effectiveness that does resonate very well with plan sponsors, especially those in the defined contribution space that really have fee considerations as a high priority. Um, that being said, the performance potential sits much more towards the active end of the spectrum. So I think in terms of what you're getting for that cost, it becomes extremely appealing as, as a proposition. Um, and I think that because, again, this is a rules-based approach, it does allow for that lower cost, but is aiming to provide that outperformance and risk mitigation through a full market cycle. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... You know, it's that old age old conversation for the fiduciary, balancing those costs versus the return stream. And again, the Department of Labor said you don't have to have the cheapest funds possible. It's about your process and the value you bring in participants. Greg, I want to come to you for the last question. And, and I always pick on you, but I, I'm not really going to pick on you. But I want to ask, are there any plan sponsors currently using this strategy yet? And And maybe if there are. What are some of the hurdles to adoption? Sure. So currently we have a diversified investor base um, globally, really, uh, from pensions to high net worth investors, even sovereign wealth and, and some endowment investors. We continue to see interest from DB and DC plan sponsors. We've heard from some clients that they're looking for a new approach or, or new ideas in the equity space uh, that aren't too expensive and, and aren't too exotic. Um, one relatively small hurdle uh, right now for these types of strategies is vehicle. Typically, they're offered in an ETF format, um, but we do expect to see CIT vehicles soon. So right now, it's really a matter of educating clients, advisors, and partners, and getting the word out that there is uh, and there are some new approaches uh, to equity investing that are worth a look. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Greg, Danielle, great to see you. Thanks for sharing, a, I think, a unique approach and, and an innovative approach. And we look forward to having you back, both back on the program again very soon. Thank Thanks, you. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archive, check out our latest content, visit our website, and of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. We'll have some very special guests, and still that, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Tax audits, tax liens, 
wage garnishments. Every day we hear stories like this about good folks who are simply struggling to pay their bills. Each of them are living a frightening IRS tax nightmare, and they are afraid it will destroy their lives. I'm a divorced single mom, and my ex-husband left me and the kids with a lot of unpaid bills, including unpaid taxes. I was really starting to show my stress on my kids because the IRS had sent me a letter demanding a huge payment from me. I couldn't afford it. So then the IRS was threatening to garnish my wages. I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. That would have put me over the edge financially. It truly seemed hopeless, but then a friend at work told her to call the tax relief line. The people at the tax relief line, they told me about something called innocent spouse relief. They worked it out so that all of the taxes from my ex are not my problem. I don't know how that works and, and I don't care. All I care about is that I don't owe the IRS a dime and they are not going to take my paycheck. Even if it seems hopeless, you should call the number on your screen right now. There is absolutely no cost for the call or the consultation. You are under no obligation. If you are worried that the IRS could garnish your wages, seize your assets, even take your home, call us right now. The Tax Relief Line is here to help you. Now you have a knowledgeable, professional team of tax experts that are ready to negotiate with the IRS and fight for you to save you money. The Tax Relief Line's professionals have successfully negotiated thousands of cases, reducing and sometimes even eliminating the tax debt for their clients. It's very easy to get started. Simply call the number on your screen right now. You don't have to live in fear anymore. The call and the consultation are free.